Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today our topic of uh, discussion is ulcerative colitis. Uh, uh, we'll focus ourselves on the gross microscopy procedure, which uh, and we'll touch uh, the clinical features a little bit, uh, just for um, just to make it more connected. <clears throat> now. Ulcerative colitis and Crohn disease. These are two important uh, chronic diseases of the GI tract. Okay, there are few differences and few similarities between these two. Now, how they're similar? That they may show some similarity as far as clinical presentation is concerned. May present bleeding, etc. Both of them, let's say. Um, but there are some very peculiar features that differentiate these two from each other. First thing you should remember that ulcerative colitis, and when, when somebody performs the colonoscopy, ulcerative colitis is a continuous disease starting from the lower GI tract, the rectum, and it goes upwards in a continuous manner. So if somebody says that they performed an endoscopy and there was a continuous disease, it's more likely to be ulcerative colitis uh, instead of Crohn's. Crohn is generally a patchy disease. Okay. An example of gross morphology of uh, ulcerative colitis is this. You can see here, this is the relatively normal portion. And here, in this area, the disease has affected the large bowel okay this is a specimen of large bowel this is the disease portion you can clearly uh, uh, understand that this kind of a demarcation between the non-disease and the disease portion of the body. okay these are small you can if you look at closely you can see small dot like areas which kind of represent the pseudopolyps that form in ulcerative colitis now, so first thing that if somebody asks you why it is more likely to be gross specimen of an ulcerative colitis, you say that, sir, this has affected the portion of bowel in a continuous manner. It is not like that one portion is affected, then another portion is affected, and then and there's, an, uh, there's a clean area in between. So, sir, this is how I say it is more likely to be uh, ulcerative colitis uh, then Crohn and then if somebody shows you these areas these this is a high power view of things known as the pseudopolyps now why they're called as pseudopolyps there are polyps in the GI tract there's pseudopolyps pseudopolyps form in ulcerative colitis and why now when it's a chronic disease it affects the normal lining of the large bowel and when it affects the normal lining of large bowel, there is destruction of that normal lining. When there's destruction of that normal lining, obviously normal hostile kind of pores and everything gets lost from those areas. So these areas are those affected areas. The rest of the epithelium, the rest of the surface mucosa gives a polypodal appearance. Okay. So that's why these are termed pseudopolyps. These are not true polyps in the sense that one area of the bowel it grow, it continues to grow in a different in a different fashion in the form of polypodal uh, in the form of a polypodal tissue or a precancerous tissue. It is not like that. Secondly, in a, in another gross feature of uh, ulcerative colitis is that mucosal bridges can form. You can see these strands passing from one area to another. These mucosal bridges are another feature of uh, peculiar feature of ulcerative colitis. Okay, and then you can see here a picture that shows it more clearly that how this normal portion of the bowel is different from this abnormal portion of the bowel. Okay, so this is the diseased portion, diseased by ulcerative colitis, and this is the non diseased portion, the normal portion of the large bowel so these are few 
important features gross features of ulcerative colitis continuous disease pseudopolyp formation because the bridges bridges form and um, then um, um, another important feature is that the disease is generally confined to the superficial layers there is no generally no transmural inflammation that is from surface till from from the internal surface the mucosal surface till the outer serosa it does not expand like that generally ulcerative colitis does not expand like that but crohn does okay now we'll have a look at the microscopy now if it's a chronic process going on you should remember it will cause a damage to the crypts that are normally present in the large bowel so this is a crypt these are different crypts these are different crypts now they have lost their architecture normally they are beautifully aligned close to each other on a cut, cut section on a biopsy or on a section of large bowel they are present in close proximity to each other fairly equidistant uh, crypts um, fairly round in shape round to oval in shape or tubular in appearance but they are kind of regular they are not very separated they, are, they don't look like that for example this one has fairly distorted shape these are changes of chronicity chronic problem so, okay so crypt architectural distortion is one feature important feature of ulcerative colitis and then people like to give these kind of pictures in ospies sometime so remember that another important feature of ulcerative colitis is cryptitis and crypt abscess formation now what is cryptitis cryptitis is when inflammatory infiltrate particularly the neutrophils they infiltrate the uh, epithelium of a crypt okay so that is cryptitis and when there is a bunch of neutrophils inside the crypt that is called crypt abscess so remember these two words cryptitis and crypt abscess are very important features of ulcerative colitis then this photomicrograph shows you that the disease is limited generally to the upper layers the surface layers to the surface mucosal layer and it has not extended below there's no inflammatory infiltrate that is going down in this region which in crohn disease it does in this picture you can also again see the crypt architectural distortion there is a bit of cryptitis here the crypts are distorted different shapes and sizes and this is one and not very important feature in routine but uh, they have mentioned in your books that met metaplasia is also occurred this is not a very important feature to remember for you at the undergrad level okay so important things crypt architectural distortion cryptitis crypt abscess and the thing that it is not extending the inflammation particularly it is not extending down into the deeper layers okay so these are the important uh, gross and microscopic uh, features of uh, ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease well, i've tried to explain those which are most important with respect to your uh, exam uh, please let me know if you uh, if you have any questions thanks a lot